How is it going? I'm all right, mate. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh. Yeah. God, we haven't spoken bloody months, it seems. Yeah, one week because of exams. No, it yeah. was last Saturday. Yep. No, I'm not, so, having, I'm, not having, I'm not having a go at you. I'm just saying it feels like an eternity, like forever. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing that it's been just, you know, one and a half week or two weeks because of the exam, but it, it does feel like, you know, we're doing it after a long time. Yeah, it does feel like so. Yeah. Well, what was it? 7th of January or something when we last did that? Yes, and it's now the 23rd, I believe. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, me, yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and also, uh, today also, you know, like I didn't have much of a plan, like, what to do. So, yeah, um, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. But um, I did have some characters. I was reading a book, so in mind. So that would be interesting. I forgot. Do you know why? Yeah, why? I thought, I thought do you know what? I'll read the latest chapters of Surrender just to see what it's like. <laughs> and, like, I read, I've re- I read up to four chapters, I believe. I can't remember. But, yeah, I've been reading the rest of them. And, mm. it, yeah, it, it's a different kind of book. Definitely. <laughs> I don't see myself reading Surrender for myself. Like, if I, if I ever do, like, a streaming or something, then I'll definitely read Surrender on the stream to challenge, like, hey, block me, or just to have fun with other folks. Like, look what is in there. <laughs> oh, no. You know, like but a group reading. You. It is literally vulgar as anything. Like, it really goes into detail. <laughs> I know, I know. I know that, yeah. But um, uh, we're having mismatch. So, by the way, I have some questions when Astra joins in and Brandon later that uh, about Weg the Dead up until Chapter 4. That book, I know you and Eric were talking about, you know, when he first came in at that time and Weg the Dead was released, about, like, how good the book is and first two chapters, choices... Have you read um, it? Huh? Have you read the first four chapters? I have read first four chapters, and there is some important oh, not, well, I will say on my behalf as well, I'll get my point in now while, while we're talking about it. The first two chapters, what the... What? I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. But here's a question for you. Do you... I mean, did you hope for, like, how... Wake the Dead stories here. Like, did you hope for a story like you know, like an origin story? Like, we will start with a world where everything's all right, and then we actually see you know the the apocalypse happening. Like, we're witnessing it. Like, you know, the outbreak. Like, it, it starts with us twenty one years in this pandemic or in this apocalypse, not pandemic. But so, did you wish for a alternate like storyline? Yes. I don't know. No, wait. Let me... Yes, no, I don't know. <laughs> so, I don't know, to be honest, because it's okay as it is. Yeah. But the world is doing so far, like the first couple of chapters. It, well, if they did make a book two, what would book two be about, though? That's my point. That's the thing. Hmm. I know. Um, the... Actually, um. I mean, I'm not saying it's um, not good or not liking it. What they has like the dead. It's perhaps for me the best book I've read in the past two years. It's hands down. I see blades of light and shadow type, and it's you know it's an epic book. But you know, if there was like an origin story of a zombie book, I think that would have been even more fantastic. Hey, Astra, welcome. Can you hear us? I can. Well, I can't hear it, but I can hear you. Yeah. Um, I can hear just... Oh, yeah. There you go. Good morning. How's it going? Today's good so far. Um, it, it was a quiet morning. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing really happened differently, but um, I did... I, I tried to, like, make some choices, edits, but then I ended up getting, like, tired or <laughs> something like that, but... Yes, it's been a pretty good day. I also did read a few chapters. I checked out with some new games, too, over the weekend, so that was fun. 
Oh, that's interesting. I hope everything works out and, you know, the day gets better as you go through it. So, yeah, good luck with that. Mm. Um, yeah, so before you came in, uh, Mac and I were talking about Weg the Dead because I read the first four chapters as we talked about. So I would like to know what choices you made because there are some pretty hard choices and why you guys made that choice. Yeah, Weg the Dead is... to play like it's it's a very good book but it was very difficult at times yeah. um i remember the first decision i think i i didn't have a problem making it but i did regret the other ones sort of yeah. <laughs> i i can't um, I physically have... remember what sorry yeah um, i can't physically oh, sorry bloody hell i can't physically remember what i chose but i like that there is consequences no matter what you choose as it should be yeah because yeah yeah that's so, how it should be because it's supposed to be like an experience that hmm. where the story changes based on what you choose uh, because it, i've heard that there may be a, some books where it doesn't feel like that <laughs> so it is nice to see that and wake the dead that you actually have consequences yeah absolutely uh, that's really interesting because it actually what i have played four chapters and the recent chapter where we meet angel savage it felt like the actions i mean my heart was pounding like last time it happened it was in the unexpected areas when he con- it confronted uh, vincent so it was really exciting it's like you're actually there fighting zombies i mean this is really exciting stuff they have done i mean wake the dead it's the in past couple of years after blades well Before I say something, uh, I've watched the book. I can't think of the book now. Um, just wait until you read Crimes of Passion, and then you'll say the same. Yeah, I would wait till you read Crimes of Passion because I, I think that, like, I mean, in my opinion, I really like um, Wake the Dead and Crimes of Passion. I think they're both very, very, very good. Yep. I also. I think that Bloodbound is really good, but that's like an already released series. So I think you'll also really, really like um, Crimes of Passion because it's unique. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. So that's in March. I will be, you two will be the first person to know how I feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> good. Because, you know, there's a lot going on. Like there, I'm I'm not going to say anything about it but there was a chapter where a lot of things happened like there was just too much <laughs> it was, was wild that the latest last chapter time. yeah it it was wild wow yes i yes it was quite interesting uh, it's quite interesting what actually happened at the end of it when we found out what happened but yeah yeah about what some what got it was just yeah. strange because it, we apparently like came across something <laughs> So I mean, it, it was it was really I I I thought it was a lot, but I mean, I'm really excited for the next chapter. For sure. It yeah. Yeah, you were saying something, Mac? Yeah, it, I can't say it though. I mean, <laughs> God, I'm talking like I always. No, it's the. I think it's obvious. It seems too obvious about who it could be. I mean, come on. Who was what? What? No. Uh, I don't know. It's so obvious who it is. I think oh, it is anyway. <laughs> that's interesting. We'll have to see. But, you know, one thing I know about choice is mystery. Like, I don't know about Crimes of Passion. I have not uh, seen any explicit playthroughs. I know, like, which characters appear. I'm having appear, a like... connection problem, but I think now I'm back. It's good now. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. All right, cool. I can hear you now also, yeah. So I was just saying, Max said, like, uh, he knows who could be the, the person, uh, the, the criminal here. But so well, I was let's saying, be like, honest. To be honest, yeah. though, mm-hmm. I, I thought the person who it could be, mm-hmm. I thought it could be them, but I don't know anymore. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. So I was saying, like, hold your horses, because yep. what I know about Choices mystery book is that I have not seen playthroughs of Crimes of Passion explicitly. Like I have seen like which characters appear, like the Royal Romance character and uh, Olivia and others. But I have not seen it explicitly. But all I can say is that uh, uh-huh. how choices work, if you think a character is, is, is you know, the criminal or is the bad character at first, I bet you my, um, like my whole life saving that that person is not. That person is not. Yep. 
Yeah, they that really, really happened in the unexpected areas. Uh, that was something that came as a surprise to me. Even Queen Bee. Um, well, actually, for some reason, for Queen Bee, I used to think that um, it was one of like the top 15 that was against Queen Bee, but then I kind of figured that it was probably Persephone because we never see her, you know, so I thought it was going to be that big um, reveal or something. So that one kind of made sense in that book, but Choices does, um, the writers do a really good job of misleading us at first. Yeah. I mean, like really, really good mystery. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I'm waiting for um, Crimes of Passion. Yeah, but speaking of Wake the Dead, I mean, I would really love to know what choices you guys made. So first, um, I, the thing that happened in Chapter 4, which is the major choice, I think. What did you guys choose? Did you guys, you know, take Angel's parents with you, or did you guys kill them? Oh. That one was What'd really, really tough. Oh. Yeah. Um, I actually chose to not take Angel's parents because I thought of it as a risk. I figured that maybe one of the zombies would, well, I mean, I, I figured her parents would bite someone at one point and then, you know, someone would have to be put down. That's why I chose to not take them. But I kind of feel bad about that because there are, uh, well, it doesn't affect the story as much as I thought it did, but there were times where Angel was sad. Um, but however, now that I'm going through the chapters, it seems like Angel kind of still her perky self. So I think I definitely will explore other choices when I replay it. Hmm. But I chose to not take them. And she oh. and then it was a really, really intense scene after that too. Oh. Now uh, you're making me want to go back and watch. Okay. Mac, what'd you choose and why? <laughs> <clears throat> I'll just simplify it normally for you. I took, I brought back her parents. I don't mean don't be back to life. I mean brought them back to space <laughs> with us yeah, because not... I just don't feel. I mean to be honest, I've not read that much chapters of Wake to Dead. I'm going to be honest, mm. but like That's I've fine. read up to that bit, and it's like to be honest, Angel was my love interest, so I felt like a bit of a an idiot not to, I didn't want to, you know, I thought it would affect the story more if I said no, so I just said yes, and what Astrid just said, I thought, well, what's the, the point then? Yeah. Um, yeah well, I mean, literally, nothing other than just because I didn't um, feel like but a did you say Did you say Angel was your love interest or was not? It is my love interest, so that's why oh. I did, sorry. Oh, that's interesting. oh, okay, mine is Shannon, so, but I actually kind of you know, it does change the dialogue if you don't bring her parents. There's several scenes and several chapters. Um, let's just say, like, she kind of, you know, says stuff about that later. <laughs> so, that, so I felt kind of bad about that. But I will yeah. be doing a, a replay, and I will definitely probably um, be choosing Angel this time because I, 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 I realize I actually like her a lot, too. But I do like Shannon the most. I chose to bring her parents back too because you know if you bring her parents back, there like, like Troy and Ellie, they're like uh, against it. Shannon was undecided, and uh, of course it was uh, Angel's parents. So we say like we lost our sister, so we know how it feels to lose someone yeah. close. And it felt like at the moment, you know, uh, her parents were zombies, but they were not. You know, they didn't look like that violent. So, and we are in a time in the story where we can you know, end up dead at the hand of zombies any day. So I thought, and when we specifically lost not so long ago, a loved one. So uh, it was my thought process that why not, you know, if even it's for just one day, give someone the chance to spend a little more time with their family, even if they're not, you know, in the census. So I thought like, and we are going to chain them up because we're going to face zombies, hordes of zombies anyway. So it, that was just my thought process, but I, I would love to see what happens when you, you kill them. So that's why I think it's such a good book up until this point that you actually feel like your choices matter. It does. Yeah, it, it, it's very different. And you, you have those stats at the very end of the, of the chapters. I enjoyed looking at those. At first, like the first chapter I saw and I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> but anyway, um, 
I think your points are actually really good. To be honest, I just thought that Angel's parents would bite someone. Um, that's why I uh, didn't take them. And because I figured that Angel um, needed to, you know, this sounds really, really harsh, but because they're already no longer living, I thought it would like hurt her more to have them there because yeah. she, she maybe she would still like hold on. To, but, you know, I'm going to be doing a playthrough for Angel and I'm going to be choosing different things this time just to yeah. see how it is. Because right now, I'm interested to see what it what like the impact it has, but I do see the impact already. There's actually um, several dial pieces of dialogue where um, Angel's, you know, she references it, so it actually does make a big difference. That's interesting. But, but she doesn't yeah. like she doesn't hate us or like she doesn't hate yeah. you for making the choice, but it does make a big difference. Hmm. I remember the first time we were given this kind of a hard choice. They said, which I really liked about this book, that there are, there are not any, you know, right or wrong choices in this book. You make your choice and then you live with the consequence. So I think that's really interesting. It's like, you know, you chose something, Mac chose something, I chose something. So it, it, like, it was like uh, either or. So, you know, but there could be more, you know, there could be harder choice with like three or four options and you need to pick one. I think that's really interesting how... You know, there are not any right, wrong choices that your score will go up or down, but it depends on perspectives, right? So uh, like, you can't say this is right or this is wrong, but it's just all a matter of perspective and consequences, So, which I really liked. And it's just you know, interesting to know what happens for different perspectives or how the perspectives are. That's why I, like, I think Wake the Dead, I mean, it's just I see why there was that much of a hype for this book and non-VIPs were really unhappy when they announced that it was going to be VIP two or three months prior to the release. So this is a quality book after a long, long time. Exactly. I'm, I'm very grateful for it because it, it, there was a period of time where the books weren't really as exciting to me. Um, but I do believe during those times, Queen B was running or like Queen B book one was almost done or something like that. There was this period of time like last year where it was kind of dry <laughs> So yeah. um, you, this book is like, it, it's very different. I, I appreciate how different it is in the subject matter and like the actual content and that you have like a point system yeah. and like a ranking. It's, I, it, it's different in many ways because it feels like what you do matters a lot and it's very high stakes too. Yeah. I, I think to be honest, for some reason, I feel like the first hard choice was kind of easy, but then the one in chapter four, I think that one was really difficult. And there was another one too that was just a bit much, but we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll prepare for that. But um, um, Mac and Astra, just asking, I'm still a newbie up until chapter four. Uh, I know Mac, you said you didn't read the eleven chapters, and I, I Astra read that I know. So what level are you on, both of you? I'm a newbie. Okay, I, that is a very good question. I'm going to be looking at that right now, actually. Like, it'll probably take me only a few seconds to get that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. So, Mac, what level? Do you remember your level? Uh, I could, <clears throat> sorry, I could have looked for you. Yeah. No worries. Okay, I'm about to find out, like, just now, actually. That's interesting. Oh, I'm only on Chapter 5. Right. So I think you're a newbie? No, uh, kind of, but, like, yeah. Oh, God. Hmm. Okay, now it's, it's good. Because <laughs> I'm checking the the actual video for it. Yeah. Um, I now I, I I'm pretty much close to it, so I'm, I don't I don't believe that the rank is newbie though. I think it's another rank that I have. Of course. Okay, I have it up on my screen. Yeah, yeah, definitely because I've um, definitely like I've I've been through more of the chapters. It says yeah. that my, my that my rank is hunter. Hunter. Oh, wow. Was there any intermediate? Between Hunter and Newbie? You know, I don't think there was, actually. I know that there was a level up. 
was was there actually a level up in the first chapter when when you um killed the zombie that was outside the the room that Shannon was in was that like a level up moment yeah it was like when they introduced the system like first kill yeah okay that makes sense then um there was yeah so right now um, my point is that um hunter so it i i think i bet you guys already know but it it it's just about how many zombies that we've taken down but it i'm wondering what the number is cuz i don't really see it anywhere or, unless i'm not noticing it or maybe it is yeah. somewhere <laughs> oh, no. but i i would like to see that at some point yeah someone brought up a really good point that like how in blades and queen bee you have like those bars at the top if we yeah. had that here that would have been super good Th- that is a really good point. It, it, w- the thing is, sometimes when I see uh, the queen bee, um, the point system or bar, like in that interface, it kind of, I don't really like seeing it sometimes. I prefer to have the whole screen, but if they were to make it different where it doesn't um, take as much yeah. space or if they made it like um, a detail that wasn't, or if they make the detail kind of, blend in with the actual you know book then i would probably be okay with it but with queen bee it, it wasn't the worst thing ever but i didn't really like seeing it sometimes because it kind of did mess up the aesthetics even with blade but i guess it's just a matter of opinion because some people do like to see that and i wanted i do want to be able to see the stats too but i just kind of wanted to see it differently if they could do that yeah that's an interesting point Yeah, I think uh, maybe informing after every kill, like what point you were on. Like on the top, they bring like after you pick a diamond, you know, decision. Like it, that's a really good thing. I don't know what it's called, but you know, they just like if you go on a like let's say a date, like they do something uh, like with a title, and they write something like hey, you went on a date with uh, this character. Like they have a name, and they choose the name really. You know, it, it's like a very cheesy name, a title of that particular scene. you know the one that pops up on the top after you take a diamond scene or anything specific happens yeah i i know what you're talking about i i like that feature because it's you know it, it gives you even more material in a way and um many times it is pretty funny it, it's also unique i, I i'm wondering i mean it, it sounds very <laughs> like funny to me if you know what i mean um yeah. so it's it's good um in, in and wake the dead however those we we got those warnings but it 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 they definitely didn't tell us like anything about like the zombies so it was warnings about other things hmm. but i would have liked to see um a zombie um, count after you know after we have like a battle scene that that would yeah. be nice but maybe one yeah. day like maybe in a later chapter we will finally know maybe even in the finale that really interesting yeah um also i wonder what choices did you make the first one did you did you strengthen up your food or did you strengthen up your archery section like uh, the defense the you know war mechanism like which one did you guys go for like remember like in chapter 3 you like you need to name your colony and then you need to make your first ever choice like what is needed for a particular slot like is it going to be a food pen um or is it going to be livestock or is it going to be a you know like a war mechanism something like a archery something i don't remember so which one did you guys choose i chose that to be a you know food you know livestock i don't know if that's going to come but that's what i chose yep i have a feeling you probably won't but i chose that too because troy kept bringing up food <laughs> yeah um, him and, and dirk kept saying stuff about food and i no i it may have been definitely troy said stuff about it but um also mac so when they were all talking about it it made me realize <laughs> that i should probably pick food but again it's not really like the wrong choice because i think as long as you just balance everything in the end you'll have a good outcome but i also chose to get the livestock pen because i figured that because i know like to me my thinking was that if they're hungry they're just not going to be able to fight the zombies very well or people will get sick and 
and that would like make things worse. Same. Um, yeah. Mac, what choice did you make? Uh, do you remember? I think I chose the food one. I can't remember, but yeah, I think it was the food one. Okay, so yeah. we all are food fanatics here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I was wondering if it was a good tip. Um, it's glad like all of you made the same choice. So yeah. I think yeah. that's interesting though because I thought most people would pick the training or the 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 suggestion that Eli gave. I thought most people would have picked that, but it it seems like I see a lot of people they did either one or the other. So apparently the food choice wasn't as rare as I thought. Yeah, I thought I'm gonna, I'm the only person who chose that, and that's why I asked like, is it gonna be yeah. having a negative consequence? So mm -hmm. oh, all right, it's, it's probably not. No. I'm just very curious because there's so many like nuances and I don't know how that's going to work because it, it also reminds me of of the crown and the flame how yeah. you have opportunities to reinforce your army so there's multiple ones and I don't I can't tell if some of the choices I made actually made a difference but I, I mean at least most of it was like a very positive outcome but it was kind of confusing to me because I wasn't sure if this choice or that choice led to this outcome or that outcome. So I'm interested to see how that works in this book. Same. I mean, every, I, you know, like I used to wait for every Friday or Saturday for the unexpected errors. And now I'm going to wait for every Wednesday or Thursday because of this. And I think for you guys, um, Astra and Mac, uh, it's pretty close, so you're going to get Wake the Dead back. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens because up until now, not a single VIB bug got a sequel. And I don't know if they're planning to do something like maybe release only one book, you know, one, like, like standalones only. Um, so, I, so this will give a lot of answers. Like if Wake the Dead gets a sequel, then, you know, next VIPs can get a sequel. And if it does not, then... It, I think it's going to be a really defining moment for choices when Wake the Dead nears its, uh, you know, finale, be it book or series. Yeah, considering it's one of the best books out right now, and that was something I kind of wanted to talk about. Um, I'm a little irked that Pixelberry hasn't been making sequels for some what? books. I feel like they should be continuing on the story, even if it's just one more book. Or if it's a, if, if, or if it's like a, a mini book, like maybe six chapters or something. I really do think they could have done that because in some finales, there were a lot of loose ends, and so, and you didn't even really see a clear outcome of what happened with your MC. It, this is like for several books. I mean, there is some where the where they wrap up the story perfectly, but I I really do think that Pixelberry should invest in making some sequels because I would have loved one for Queen B seeing her yeah. um, in the workplace and having like new enemies and maybe even becoming friends with Poppy somehow, you know, like that would have been really cool. And then maybe like getting married to Ina or Ian or whoever you picked or, or even Zoe, like it would have been nice to see stuff like this because a lot of people really, really got into that book and, 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 and you, you know, personally that, Queen BMC is my favorite, so <laughs> yeah. So that, that was something that I was kind of annoyed about, but other than that, even though I thought that um, Shipwreck was a pretty big part, it definitely wasn't, it's not on the level that Wake the Dead is on, but I thought it would get a sequel just because of the type of content that it has and how it's very popular right now. So it's a bit surprising that it didn't get one. I think as well to epitomize on what you said. I think one. I don't. It's not personally my favorite book. This ever I, I, probably one of my least favorites. But Ride or Die, literally. Whenever somebody says, like you see a post saying, "Oh, who, what does that sequel?" You can guarantee yourself one of the top three would be Ride or Die, Queen Bee, and probably I can't. I don't know, but yeah, Ride or Die is probably up there. Yeah, that is really it, it. You know, I I I kind of liked that book a lot. It, it was it, it was one of those different books where it involved like the, you know, like a tough lifestyle. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I did enjoy seeing a new side of the world, even though I don't know if it's like exactly like that in the setting that the book was in. Um, but it does seem like that book should have actually had a sequel because it really did leave off on a cliffhanger, and so did Most Wanted. Um, Most yeah. Wanted and and uh, Rider Died. Those two definitely deserved one, and Hero. I kind of, I'm very, like, suspicious about Blades, though, because yep. you know how there's, like, another announcement? <laughs> yep. I just, I just have a feeling that because it's not a book. Because it's not a sex book, they're not going to bring it out. Yeah, like, it, because it's not steamy. I don't think that yep. they're going to want to actually release it. I, I was thinking, I remember um, saying earlier I, that I thought maybe if they changed the sequel of one, if they decided to make a sequel or something, um, I would be okay if they made it steamy, just so that they could actually release it. So I'm yeah. very doubtful, to be honest. Um, I I kind of think it will be canceled, um, yeah. but there may. But if it does get canceled, what I think is going to happen is that Pixelberry would probably release a book that's similar, that has like magical elements to it. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. about uh, yeah, go on. You want to say something? Yeah, I was going to ask you, Astra. Sorry, this is, a lot of people are going to be annoyed at this. I was going to ask you, but you. <laughs> Yeah. Is there another love interest in Ride or Die? I actually can't remember. Because... <laughs> there's three. So there's... The first one we see is Logan, and he's definitely the favoured one of yeah, the that's story. Yeah, he Yeah, he's definitely the one that the writer uh, kind of built into the story as the main one. And then there was Colt. Yeah. He was like he was a little, he's a bit antagonistic <laughs> in a oh, way. Yes. Um, I, I think he's kind of like a rude character, but I don't blame him. Like that's just how he is. So yeah. because I still have respect for him as a character. And then the third one was Mona. She kind of I can't really tell if she got the least amount of scenes, but I can yes. tell that Logan got the most. Definitely Logan. Yeah, yeah, that's all I wanted to know. Yeah. And the I mean, thing is, they left off on a really sad cliffhanger too. So, so you literally have no idea what happens to Mona, or yeah. yeah I mean, ride or die. Like it's a pretty much Logan book, just like uh, Open Heart is Ethan, and um, you know, like, like favorite love interest there, and. You know, laws of attraction kind of on that game kind of. So, yeah, that's, that's true. Um, but about sequels, I would even can say I, so. Can I, can I, can I tell you something now? Yeah, yeah. You know, I know it's not everybody's favorite series, but imagine the absolute praise Pixelberry would get if they brought out It Lives in, the, in like October time, November time. Absolutely. But, but oh. do you know, like, the It Lives a actually third? is getting a third book. Yeah. Like it lives within by the fan group, and they released the first two chapters. I think I told you guys, but they're absolutely awesome what they did there. I mean, fantastic. The, the plot, they brought up characters like Noah and the old group, and, you know. Well, I have like, heard one thing about that. Yeah. Isn't Noah quite a favorite love interest, apparently? Are no, Noah's me? not a love interest. <laughs> Wait, I think he is, though. I saw. Some, I might be wrong, but for some reason, I saw something about it, and I I thought that I saw that Noah was a love interest, and I was kind of surprised and yeah. like, but in a bad way, <laughs> because I don't think he should be one. But I think he might be one. I could double check. No, there are four love interests. Um, which book are you talking about? The fan mates. The fan oh, mates no. people. Four love interest, not Noah, but Jocelyn, like the bully. She's a love interest. There is another uh, African, uh, no, no, yeah, not African, uh, uh, Native American guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, and there is like Amelia, who is my favorite love interest. And there's another guy oh. who is, I don't know, Hispanic probably. So there are four love interests. But Noah can't be a love interest generically because Noah is 
in a superposition state of being alive and dead because you know in someone's playthrough she's a, a he's a ghost and in someone's playthrough yeah he's alive so you know writing him as a love interest is it's like a lot of coding stuff so he's not a love interest but i i think you get some choices you know where uh, yeah like you see like he has a connection with uh, the mc from it lives in the woods okay like, there's some conversations you get they have some you know noah has some feelings for that like friendly or deep deep feelings but not with the mc of the fact yeah for for the noah it, that does make sense he, he wouldn't really be he he's not love interest material specifically because of what happened and the fact that his sibling is you know no longer living and did have i don't know how to explain it but like you know the whole supernatural thing in that town um in the book it wouldn't be good for him to be a love interest but um i I still I'm trying to look up like wh- which the love interests are but I remember seeing Jocelyn and I think that there was a character that looks like Ava Lawrence um yeah. the the okay. black version and I yeah Amelia I, yeah she's my favorite one just so Same. far but I don't I don't remember the other ones actually no there's Jocelyn like you said yeah so I'm going to be looking at that later because you mentioned like two other people yeah um, and I have no I, idea who it, one oh, guy is Lincoln. Oh, isn't one of them Tom? Oh Tom. no, I, no, I don't think it's Tom. For some reason, I thought that. Oh yeah, yeah I, I thought it was that. Abel, I remember now. One guy is Abel, who is a uh, Native American. Lincoln is the Hispanic one. Uh, I think uh, Amelia is like the one you said, uh, Eva Lawrence, and we all know Jocelyn. She needs no introduction. Yep, she's she's been in several books this year already. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Whoa, where's Stacy? Isn't Stacy in there? Isn't Stacy a character in that one? Or am I thinking of the wrong book? Yes. Yeah, well, she's in. Yeah, she's. She's in the first one. And depending what happens, you can still see the other characters, but it seems to be a minor scene. But it is still appreciated because it's nice to see them again. Yeah, of course. Wait, were you saying that you like Stacy a lot? Yeah, it's just, to be honest, I'm not going to say actually because, you know. Oh, nah, uh, okay. That's fine. I'll just wish, sorry, I'll just wish more female love interests would get the same love as some more male ones, to be honest. That's with anybody. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a bit of a thing that I'm dealing <clears throat> with with some of the books. Um, so, for example, in Laws of Attraction, Although I think that Gabe is a wonderful mentor. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. To cut in there. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, mm-hmm. We actually spoke about this, didn't we, in the event? The other day on text message, didn't we, about that? Yeah, I remember that. About Aslan, didn't we? From Laws of Texas. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. how she's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, push yeah. 11. Just, yeah. We've been talking about that a lot, yeah. She's not pushed. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of like she's the only love interest, but no, just jokes apart. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm by pushed love interest, I mean, you know, like, some, like you have to go for a male because now as much as I like John Somerset, like, you know, at one point it felt like, you know, Gemma and um, Huge, they were not even in the part. Like, like, everybody wanted you to go for, like, go for John, go for John. I mean, he was my love interest, so uh, I didn't have a problem there. But I, I see, like, uh, it was in Chapter 14 or 15. They could have just uh, locked it with the person you want, be it Huge, be it Gemma, or be it John. But, you know, it felt like John, John, and then finally you're given the option, you know. So I think uh, this is something that happens with the main love interest. And when it's a male, then it's, it's like, maybe I don't want them, or I. it's kind of a 
tough situation, you know, like it's just, it, it can yeah. turn off. It, I, I know what you mean about, about that book. The thing is, I, so the, I chose Gemma because I felt like I could relate to her because she's a woman who doesn't follow convention of society and she's very bold. And that's something that I really, really like. So that's why I, it resonated with me. And obviously I think she's gorgeous too. So I, I picked Gemma, but to be honest, I think my, if there was another um, love, interest, love interest I would choose in that book, it probably would have been you. Because I, because I felt like he was very relatable. And yeah, John, yeah. also, he's a good character. I felt like he was, I don't know why, I guess. Uh, I just didn't um, see him as like a, a love interest for some reason. I, I thought of him as like a sidekick in the story. <laughs> It's it's kind of weird. I guess everyone has like a different perception of the characters, yeah. but I did. But I think I do think that John's a great character, though. Yeah, but like I see the point. Like you know, like it's like a generic thing for choices. If the main love interest is not gender customized, with like Ethan, John, or you know, Gabe, you name it. You know, you, just, you guys are talking about Logan. I I didn't read the Try to Die, but you know, it's kind of a generic thing. I mean, it happened with Rory. I mean, they push it, you know, your sisters are like Rory, Rory, Rory. And until you're given the option to choose, you actually get to choose from Rory, Sky, and Ajay. Actually, again, Rory was my love interest and she was gender customizable. So uh, that didn't make a big effort for me. But people who were for Ajay or Sky, I think um, it should have been locked a bit earlier. Now, again, that brings another question that if it's a single love interest book all along, then you're not going to have to deal with the problem, of, you know. So, like, there are pros and cons to everything. That's That really does bring up a lot of points in my mind, actually, because this Pixelberry chooses to continue on with mostly single love interest books, then I would like to at least see them have uh, side characters that you can have a fling with to, to make up for the fact that you don't really have a lot of options. And another thing is, if they were to do that, it would be nice if you could have a little survey at the beginning of the book to write, like, what choose what type of personality you would like the love interest to have, like they did in Perfect Match. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it would be cool if, so if they were to continue on with just love, single love interest books, if you could actually customize a personality, because sometimes with some of them, um, there's fans that feel very strong about a love interest and they don't really like their personality. So it makes, it kind of ruins the book for them. So if it, it would be nice to see if Pixelberry would implement at least one or two of those sort of features. But I do believe that would improve the experience. Yeah. That would be really interesting. They have a survey on, I think, uh, uh, the inputs will take, in, uh, you know, take effect from 2023 or four because it's still going on, I guess, or uh, the books of 2022 were already decided, I think, before the survey was out. But, you know, I think I do see uh, what you, you know, are saying and what we've been saying, Mac and I, and we, Brendan, also for a long time. But I think, you know, if you see that 2022, um, yeah, it's two, right? Yeah, it's two. Uh, 2022, you know, like the, uh, the book schedule, uh, the first, out of the first three books, Two are gender customizable. So I think that's a big plus because if you look back, there were lots of gender lock books in 2020 and uh, even before that. So I think it's it's taking effect and I would like to see more changes depending on the service they do or, you know, even bring more service and implement more changes. So that's always nice to see. But um, I, I think it's improving a lot. Not saying that the books before were bad, but you know there is some like one or two percent things that we need to see improving. I think that's happening. Let's see. Yeah, that that makes that's how I feel too. Because th you know there was a on Choices Reddit, which is also a, a very nice community. There was this. I remember there was this time where there was a um, love interests that are customizable and not being as deep or as significant. But I think that it depends on the actual book and the writer, because you could still have a love interest that looks completely different than um, than you would expect that lo love interest to be in that country or 
place, they can, they can still have a very vibrant personality. And, and an example for me is like Manu. Like, if for example, I, I could imagine Manu looking ha, ha, like having any kind of appearance. So that was done very well. Um, I guess I'm saying that they 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 came that the writer did a good job making the love interest gender neutral, or they didn't rely on stereotypes. So that's a good thing, and it's also kind of like that for Silburn too. So it does. So in my opinion, I do think that these books, the new single love interest books that have the customizable love interests, are a way to keep everyone satisfied because, you know, Pixelberry does really do the female love interest bad sometimes. Sometimes they won't even give them personalities, or they won't, they won't even show up much in the book. So yeah, and it, it, it's annoying. Like I try not to get annoyed by it. I personally chose to not read Open Heart because of what I heard about Jackie. Because I, I found her to be like the like a pretty good looking love interest and I wanted to see more of her, but I heard that she's not like not be really, not very really treated well. So I, um, I so I'm choosing to not read that book, but I could change my mind later. I don't want to burst the bubble or anything without you saying what I read it, but I did read a post a couple of months ago, and Jackie's like bottom, second to bottom, if not bottom of the scenes you get to take with her. So yeah. Oh, it's not because Raphael is the worst, or I'm not not like worst character, but I mean like he gets the least seen. You mean? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, he he was supposed to actually not no longer be alive in that book, but then. The writers actually listened to the feedback, and I I found that to be very significant because it changed the book, and it may have not really helped to actually keep him, and because he again, like what Max said, he had the least scenes anyway. So by having that, they didn't introduce a female love interest, a second one, and they didn't give Jackie more time. So I don't think. Um, I think that that book itself is just very bad when it comes to love interest scene distribution. No, I think um, um, they were like when this happened. Like it, it, the description said before going to Hyrus that one of your friend is going to uh, going going to go down surgery to survive cancer, and you, another friend is going to Brazil, who is Rafael. How your life will change after that? So I think, you know, after this, if they had to do it, I think they're trying to kill off both uh, Kyra, I think, and uh, Rafael, but then they changed mind and then sort of brought, you know, made Rafael a love interest. Now, in book one, Rafael was not a love interest, but we get scenes that were, you know, more than a friendly scene. Like, it was still friendly, but, you know, and then we also get to flirt and have similar kind of scenes with Kyra throughout the uh, book one point. So I think when Rafael was made a love interest at the same time, Kyra should have been made a love interest too. That would have made sense. But respective of that, I think Open Heart was a series where um, the love interest department was a bit messed up. But other than that, I think it was for me personally, uh, book one was amazing. But book to book three, it was still, I don't know if at the time it was released in because of that, because we were not getting much at that time anyway. But I think it was pretty good. I just read it for, you know, the, the plot because it was a actually really good plot until, yeah, it didn't end well that much, but it, it was still an okay <laughs> book compared to some other books I've read recently. So, and um, this is pretty interesting. Also, uh, you guys are talking about sequels uh, just shortly that, again, uh, giving sequel. You know, it's always I would love for my favorite books to have a lot of sequels, but sometimes uh, it's happening recently, which we were talking about also that where well, the choices are trying to drop sequels and make only standalones. Now, I think if there are books that you have actually sequels planned, like Endless Summer, uh, It Lives uh, 1, 2, and Perfect Match, then give it a sequel. America's most eligible, but dragging a book, I think, can be, you know, 
not productive, like counterproductive sometimes, because we all saw what happened in Nan the Nanny Affair too. I don't think they had originally something planned, but then they saw like, okay, this is fan favorite, make a book too. And they're now going to book three, you know, open heart book three. Again, I don't think they had the best material. They changed writers and they, because I think, you know, if you don't want to, you know, don't have material to give a sequel, I think it's better off as a standalone because you know, the quality gets ruined. But I think if, I don't know how it works again, but if they have the writers, if they originally have like, yes, I can drag it, then they should go on. But if they think like, um, maybe it's not going to be the best, I think they should stop, you know. But again, only time will tell for future sequels how they'll work out. Yeah, yeah and I've always wondered... Cause I, I love to hear what other choices fans think. Would you rather a series end um, or with just one or two books, n meaning not having a continuation and have it end on a high note and have a very good ending? Or would you rather have a continuation, even if the quality suffers a little bit? That's an interesting question. Because to me, like when you have when you bond with characters and you really love them, you still want to see them, but then you know that that book is a standalone. So what would you rather have? Would you rather just, you know, leave it at that or still have a sequel, even if it will potentially not be as good? But I also think, like, you know, if a book is standalone, like Distant Shores or, you know, Foreign Affairs, I don't mind them being standalone that much, but... I, I would love them, love to have sequel, of course. But what I, what you know, like where I feel I'm unsatisfied is that it's a standalone. Yeah, if I'm lacking that book, that's a bummer. But what upsets me the most is that even if it's, it feels incomplete, rushed at the end. Foreign Affairs, it was, of course, it was rushed. We didn't get the full storyline behind Aina. They just pushed us toward Blaine. You know, it, it just. Because, yeah, I mean, not getting a sequel is a bummer. But if we get a sequel, then, okay, I'm going to see it in the next book anyway. But if it's not getting a sequel and it's rushed and weird, then I think uh, we have that hunger and thirst left for the story. And it's uh, it's not quenched yet. Same for Distant Shores. I think there were loads of questions. Uh, I chose Charlie route. I don't know for Edward or Oliver what questions were left. But we needed to find her mother. And there are lo lots of questions how it ended up. I think they just rushed it really in a weird way. So I think I'm okay with standalones as long as they do it really well. Like Heist Monaco, one of the perfect standalones. You get all your questions answered. Uh, Passport to Romance, one of the best standalones there. I can't think of anything else. Uh, yeah, um, Save the Date, really good standalone. Mighty First Loves, perfect one. Uh, with every heartbeat, another good one. Yeah, you have a lot of good takes, actually. Those books you mentioned, I felt very satisfied with them, especially um, with every heartbeat and the heist, Monaco. The one that that was kind of bad was definitely, uh, obviously, I think Ride or Die was probably one of the worst um, for the endings, and then even Hero. But um, with the sequels, if, if there's a book, right? I mean, you know, for all of the books that are being currently released, which one would you guys actually want to have, have like a sequel for? Wait, like, do you day. guys think that that was my answer to? <laughs> what about you, Matt? I say Crimes of Passion because what could happen after Wake the Dead? What could physically possibly happen after you've just stop the virus the zombie virus what now um, another... well, yeah that is a good question I, i'm thinking maybe there could be medical advancements that would make that would change their world and then they can the writers can explore that or they can explore more of why um there was like unique looking zombies and what caused that or maybe the conspiracy behind the leader of the tower so I think they can do a lot of stuff, but I, I don't know if they will. And I do think that Crimes of Passion would be a nice book to have a sequel for. However, that depends on whether or not there continues to be crime within the actual storyline and having like a lot of 
like having mm-hmm. multiple victims, if, if something like that happens, then yeah, I would see that as a book that should have a sequel. As well, um, as well, just I'll get another point. I'll go for that topic. Look, I know as much as I don't like people like Queen Bee, and let's not get into Queen Bee again because of that, what happened last time. But people say, yeah, they want the book free, book free. What could happen in a book free? Like, this is me, not this is me, Gem, to, I'm generally trying to ask a serious question. No hate, no shame, literally. No matter if you love or hate the book, what could generally happen in book three? In a book I three, wonder, say. are you talking about Queen Bee or which series? Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, Queen Bee. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. It's like, if people say, oh, I want a Queen Bee book three. You're like, what could yeah. happen in a book three? Yeah, so like, while you're saying, like, Queen Bee book three, if, like, book two was almost kind of same with book one, with almost the same antagonist, Poppy, the X thing just uh, kind of fell flat. And then if we were to go for book three, we probably wouldn't have uh, a good plot, and it's better off without a book exactly. two. That's what you mean, right? I feel like it would become, like, well... Oh, probably a wedding book. I, 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 yeah, I, mean, I don't want to spoil it or anything, but um, do you know anything about mismatch? No, I don't know. Me, yes, <laughs> I believe I have read it, yes. I vividly if- remember what I said about that love interest, so, yeah. That love interest is very, very, very gorgeous, but, <laughs> like, all three versions of the female love interest, it was very difficult to choose from them. One of them looks like Kristen Stewart, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that, but um, I feel like if there was a third Queen B, it would be like this match. Because it would be workplace focused, you know, no no longer a college environment. And there would be competition with people in the workplace that you might have new enemies. I, that, that would, I would envision that as what a Queen B book would be. So I do think they could still do something like that, but I, I think at, the, at reality, like, it, it's okay that it ended at book two because she did graduate, so, you know, what, what really can we do uh, other than making it like a lifestyle book? It, it, it would kind of, it would change everything about it. If, if it exactly. Was that would have been super awesome. I mean, uh, in a college in Belvoir again, another year probably would have been that exciting. But I see what you're saying. You know, like if they're in like uh, you know workplace environment, how they're going new. You know, maybe a new poppy there or like something else is happening, and then how we're you know, connected with our uh, love interest, be it Zoe or Ina or whoever it is. So that yeah, then it's like a different ball game, and that's a you know. Cool, you know, sequel I'm down for, but in Belvoir it would have been, I think personally, a bit tough to, you know, think exactly. of something, that, you know, ridiculous, <laughs> funny thing. It's, uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, there are look what you said, Astra. There are lots of books like High School Story. I wonder what it would be like if we see them in college or in Amy. What are they doing after the reality TV show life? Are they having some drama? Are they having baby? Like what? Like there's always this. So I'm totally on board with that. Like. Uh, whatever we have the plot in the book if the after like what, what's happening after that life if they show that in a sequel i think that's the best sequel ever i mean that would, because it's always exciting to see them growing up from one field and uh, seeing how they're thriving in the next field in the next challenge how they're taking it up that would have been super awesome yeah i know i would love that because it, it gives you closure and it makes you feel good to see what come what becomes of this character and i feel like that just would it would make me very happy to see that because i do have some lots of questions about some books especially charlie and the situation with her mother so it yeah i i, I would love to see updates like what you're saying even if it was to be a shorter book yeah or the and then, just, you know yeah go on Oh, sorry about that. Another thing I was going to say earlier was that because the Queen Bee ending wasn't really ideal and a little rushed, and uh, among other books, it would have been nicer if they maybe had 20 chapters. I don't know why, I don't know why the 15 or 16 chapters is kind of the standard in a way, but 
books that have a lot of content and are very complex, it, I really would like to see them have a bit more chapters. And yeah. Same for Captain Shores and Foreign Affairs. If I had 20 or 22 chapters, then I don't think people would have been as much upset about Destin Shores and Foreign Affairs not getting a sequel. Exactly. I really do think that Distant Shores, um, especially Distant Shores, I think that book definitely should have had a couple more chapters and Queen Bee book too, because it felt very rushed. Like we finally get to a competition and the results, but you don't really see what happens with Ina. Or, I mean, there is kind of like a snapshot of what happened, but it doesn't really feel like one. If you know what I mean. It, it kind of felt there. It would have been nice to see Queen Bee books who have like maybe like 18 chapters or 20 or something like that. Yeah. Totally. Second deck. I know in <laughs> me saying this reminds me of Across the Void because it was one of those books that don't have a typical number of chapters. There ended up being 22. But with that book, because it was also much, I think it would have been beneficial to have it in 25 chapters or something. I'm using, I'm just saying numbers. <laughs> um, no, no reasoning behind it, but like basically like what I'm trying to say is if they had a few more chapters to wrap it up, that would have been nicer. Yeah. We would have gotten a closure. But, but by the way, a bit, you know, off topic, no, not off topic, but I don't know if you know it or not, or if I have told you guys or not. Uh, with Across the Void, I what I heard, like, um, Across the Void, I don't know if you knew that it was originally a book that was destined for a sequel and probably one of the very few sci-fi books. But then a lot of people didn't like the sci-fi book. A lot of people really played it. And I think it was really down in the ranking. Uh, so and then at the same time there were other books coming out so it, it had the night bounce luck like it got overshadowed at the recent time wow. with other books but it went on hiatus and it was a long hiatus just like open heart book two and when it came back they just rushed it and ended it with chapter 22 but otherwise it was a book two there was a book two but which got cancelled you can see like the condition, why the Vanguard and Jura, they hate each other and they fight each other. We don't know much about that because we're not told about that. And it is rushed that way after Hydus. That's just a little info. It was, you know, I, I don't want to say that it's a bad book because I actually, I have a soft spot for Across the Void because I love Kepler a lot. <laughs> I, th I bet you know that because <laughs> I talk about her a lot, but... Um, She's just like, I guess I, I really like Kepler because she's very different than the other love interests. There, you know how there's like the, the character, the character type, like the categories of what type of character this is, and that type of character. And I would like to see more of the female love interest be like Angel or someone who's very high powered and very confident. Rather than you know be someone that is shy, because I feel like that's what most of the people of interest are. I agree with that, but I, what what I do hope to change is, is, and I don't think, and to be honest, I'm probably speaking from other books as well in different apps. But like, I I just wish they'd stop it with all these like boss, like mentor. Like teacher stuff like that kind of tropes. It's it. It does get a bit, you know, a bit boring. But after, yeah. Oh, you mean the forbidden romance trope? That's that's never going to go away, in my opinion. A lot of people like to read that type of stuff, <laughs> like like the professor stories and apparently even a doctor one. That one kind of makes me feel weird. <laughs> like the workplace. Romance, if, if it's like a, a higher up, it yep. wouldn't bother me if it was like a co worker, like Ashley, for example. Um, I do like forbidden romance myself sometimes, but you know, when you just get almost every book you have a relationship with your mentor, it kind of gets boring. Yeah. I mean, if you just see almost all the books that you're having a relationship with a mentor, so that's why I think Shipwrecked was a different book because you know. 
in this book, there is no superiority, and you just frankly exchange. Yeah, you know, your. So I think Wake, uh, um, Wake the Dead is definitely another book where it is not there. But in that book, uh, Shipwreck, even what we have in Crimes of Passion, there is nothing like any superiority or anything like, you know, no one is superior or inferior. But he just frankly, I think it's one of the best books or uh, one book where you get to spend a lot of time with the love interest and you really get to know them inside and out. And I, I think there are some ridiculous hookup scenes at odd times. But, I mean, I did enjoy the scenes. And I think it's just mm-hmm. the way we bond with them. It's just not we're just there to hook up with them or just, you know, uh, it's just uh, some bodily attraction. But it's actually some, you know, mental bond connection. And we actually are ready to bet our life for them and there too. And, you know, their past struggles, how it was. I think it's um, a really good chemistry they have there if they did a bit lengthier chapters and some more plot can, from- can i can i sum yeah. up for you please yeah yeah you ready for this <clears throat> yeah. roll. oh no you've just been shot do you want to hook up <laughs> oh, yeah it- and I actually didn't. I found it more amusing than I more than I hated it. To be honest, it's like, for God's sake, man! You've just nearly been shot. God, let's hook up. Jesus Christ, man! What? That's what I call trying to satisfy fans that are um, very. <laughs> oh, look, well, I was going to say something then, but I'm, I'm, it's not. It's a bad thing. But if you want me to say, it, I'll say. It. I mean. You've just been shot. What do you want me to do? Just stand still and lay down doing nothing? I mean, come on. I've just been shot nearly. <laughs> I'm in shock. You know? Exactly. It's a traumatic experience. And it's, depending on the person, you can't really function normally. Or your mind might be really blank. So that's why it was a bit weird. And I thought it was distasteful. And I'm going to I'm gonna branch off on this. Sorry. Uh, the same could be said about Surrender. She's just gone through something traumatic. So why is the person doing this? Yeah, that's... Some, that's like... So when I read the book, I think about that in the back of my mind. But I think it, 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 it for me, it's just... They have... This, this book has a, a main character that's overly eager. <laughs> She's just like... Yeah. Really, really, really trying to get into a different lifestyle. So even though she is hurting, it seems like it's being overshadowed by her interest in Reagan and trying to, you know, learn how to be a sub. Or yeah, look, it, 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 on that, cause I, that, the less said about that book, the better, in my opinion. But I, if you want me to be honest, I, I try to play it as a female love interest, but. It really didn't work. It really didn't. Like, as more. Yeah. Like, it, it feels weird because it's very male coded. Is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah. Very, very much. It. I don't like that about the book because, you know, I, I would love to see more of those customizable love interests being written a little bit more musical because. Yeah. There was like a chapter or two where it seemed like Reagan was, what's the word for it? Like showing off. And it, sometimes it feels like it is a very, like it's a male character. But I, I, guess, I guess for me, when that happens, I try my best to just to think, okay, oh, maybe there's something like it's not a lot of fun. That's how I feel about it, but I don't like to see the, the characters being overly um, coded as like one gender, because then you play as that character, and then it feels like, oh, this is not really realistic. Can I just ask something else as well, please, if you don't mind me asking? This is totally off topic. Do you know the latest chapter of uh, Crimes of Not Crimes of Passion, you pillock? Um, Surrender, chapter ten. Is it as bad as it's, everybody says it is? Apparently, what I've been I'm, I've been reading it uh, lately. I've been, I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to kick in and I'm going to read the rest of it. Right? Is chapter ten as bad as everybody says it is? So I'm. I actually record all of um, the the chapters and I, I post them, just not on YouTube and. 
I actually really, really like the 10th chapter. And some of my um, friends also agreed with me because that's the, ch- that's the chapter where you get a lot of action. So I actually like it more than the other ones because the other ones felt like filler chapters. So this yeah. is one where you actually finally have um, progress in the story. I don't yeah. know what's going on with the cat thing, though. Very cat. Other than that, I, I I felt that there was actually finally a progression in the story. Yeah, as well. Sorry, sorry, Nirvan. So, sorry about this, but I'm going to add something else. As well, from what I've seen of it so far, and actually, Nirvan might want to know this. Might not. So far, it just seems. I've read what six chapters up to now today. It just felt. What? What? Does she have a personal life? What? Honestly, it is so pushed in your face. I know it's a book about that, but literally, you thought she had a life as well. Not just thinking about that, thinking about that, thinking about doing it, thinking about thinking it, thinking, thinking. There's a difference between thinking and doing. Just, yeah. oh my gosh, she's like, so in the same Because it's like she's a, a, a very instant main character who's very, very eager, and I guess that kind of <laughs> makes some people feel annoyed. Because she's she's trying to like dive into a world. She's like a like a little lamb that's you know going into a, a wolf den. That's what it feels to me. And I guess maybe the reason why this book was even made was just because there are a lot of done books on other visual novel apps. There's a lot of them. Oh, and Airbag as well. Sorry, sorry, I've got something to tell you. Yeah, go on. And everybody as well. There is actually going to be a supernatural book this year, isn't there? Did you read about that? Yeah. What? 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 It's going to be a romance supernatural book. Yay. Which one? Oh, I'm not I... lying about this. I'm not lying about this. And Airbag saw it. I sent him the screenshot. Well, I can't. Are you open. talking? I know. About... There's a new book, Pixelberry said, and uh, Nayman saw it as well, so I'm not tripping or lying. It says there's going to be an upcoming Supernatural, I thought, yes, and it's going to be a romance Supernatural book. I thought, oh, for God's sake, really? I don't have a problem with romance book, but as yeah, long as it's book, but, you know, smutty, you know, smut book, mm. well, not so much. Now depends, of course, but uh, yeah. yeah, supernatural romance. It could, I don't know, like uh, um, I, I don't think we have had a book like that. <laughs> romance options in the Elementalist, and yeah, that's good. And if if you can explore, uh, yeah, it lives in the woods. We, I think there should have been a bit more closure to your love interest. I think that book should have focused a bit more on romance. That have been good. But in yep. like equal thing, I am not uh, like I'm good at romance, but it should be done in appropriate manner, like wake the dead or something. So, yeah, let's well, see what. Happens. Yeah, I'm not trying to say where it doesn't have to have romance. What I'm saying is, is most of the schedule. Yeah, like no. it doesn't have to be like, just romance, please. For God, I know I complain about this every week, and I don't care. I don't, and I don't care. But, like, I saw, honestly, I saw that. I thought, still catchable. Yes, romance. What? But one thing I will say about this is that this book uh, schedule, I mean, the release schedule of 2022, it does look like a lot better than 2021 and 2020. Like, yeah. we have, like, you know, like, while we're uh, a bit upset about not having sequels, but, you know, and we are getting specifically the VIP folks. They're getting a lot of books, new books, you know, like, uh, you know, three books. And then these books, like night books, supernatural books. And there's, so there's a lot of plot. I mean, I know now they also say Shipwrecked is going to be a plot best book adventure. But <laughs> any- <laughs> Don't make me laugh. No, I mean, it, it's a bit short chapters, but it was a way better book than the Nanny for Two and some other books. But I there's a potential in book schedule that are going to be released in 2022. Like, they're not just, um, 
in a normal book like yeah it's probably like going to be like dream zone you know like you have some romance steamy stuff which i'm okay with and then you have like amazing plot like you know half human and other books so uh, they're generic like all the covers you see untamable which i'm looking forward to even the, the cover looks uh, another heteronormative cover another you know um, <laughs> looks exactly like the original big sky country 2 cover may we add Again, here's the thing. Oh my it's, God, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like they definitely covered copy yeah. that. And apparently, isn't that one a single love interest one as well? Or did we already discuss this? Yeah, but this is uh, my opinion. I mean, I don't differ, but that whatever they feed me in the name of country books, I'm going to take it, you know? Even if it's another <laughs> surrender to 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it because you like the environment or the, the atmosphere that those books have? Because I like yeah. it too. Everything about country, you know? It's just... Yeah. Oh, I don't think it can be worse because there is something about those books, like how Big Sky can... It's like, you know... Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's a, and I think a Big Sky country, let's be honest about it, it's the most realistic book in choice. It's like... Stuff that happens in that book can happen in daily life, and uh, it's a yeah. I don't uh, look. I think what I like about this guy country as well, because you've just, you've just said discussing it, right? Yeah. Is I think I like that kind of book. Like, you have that tight knit community. Yes, there's not many people, like, there's not even a thousand people there, in the but there's three, four hundred people. But yeah, they're all tight knit, they're all like, they all help each other, they all know each other. And I know I'm a person who. Honestly, you're going to be laugh at this. I used to be a person who always used to probably like the big city. And I just, like, just liked living in a city and stuff like that. I'd love to dream like that. But honestly, I have to read in Big Sky Country. It's honestly probably changed my mind, you know. You know you're going to probably laugh at that, but honestly, I, I kid you not. I just like the tiny community. I like the music in that book. Just, that's, that's my kind of book. I know. And every Friday night, you're going to have open mic night. Yeah, absolutely. Sign me up. That's my perfect life. Oh, um, I was wondering, um, do you think that we should, like, restart? Let me know if that's something that, um, you think is needed. But I actually want to go back to that topic about the city life. Oh, yeah. Um, this way, I'm going to end the meeting and, or oh, whatever, this is in a podcast and I'm going to, you know, it's change invitation because I already hear some of your voices crackling a bit, and then it's you know one hour seventeen minutes. So let's start fresh. Oh my god! Yeah. Good. Yeah, because I was figuring. Um, I figured we should probably um, stop and then restart, so we could just take a little break and come back, and we'll um, continue on like the discussion about life and how big sky country. Um, made you feel about that. I, I would like to talk about that too, actually, because I thought that was really interesting. But yeah, yeah. I'll see you guys in a few moments. Yeah, okay. sure.